say, I need your help to continue making these awesome arm knitting videos. Please comment in the comments below and share this video with your friends. Okay, let's just stop and count to make sure we have enough stitches. And it's actually better if you have more stitches than you need. It's always safer to have more than less. So I had 24 stitches, so I'm going to put two more stitches on the end just to be safe. Your chain should have two different sides. This is the back side and it has these dashes and the front side will have V's like a braid or a plait. And that side should be facing you when you actually start knitting the rows. But we'll work on this side now to complete the cast on row. So the first thing we're going to do is pull our yarn through the last loop at a 90 degree angle and this is our first stitch for this next row that we're going to do. Now we're going to pull the yarn through each dash that is in the center of these um, the cast on. So each dash gets a loop and it goes on your arm. Make sure they're nice and loose, big enough to be comfortable on your arm. For each loop you make, your arm should go from the back of the loop to the front of the loop. So it goes in the back side and out the front. And this is true for all loops throughout the whole blanket. Your arm should go through the back of the loop to the front of the loop. At this point we have quite a few loops on our arm and we have a lot more to go so I'm going to put them on a scarf. You can use a scarf, a piece of fabric, a towel, anything that just slides through the loops and keeps them. Just put them aside and then continue on with your loops. This is much easier to do on the floor or on a table but for the purpose of being in front of the camera I'm doing it kind of suspended in air. Now I'm just going to put the rest of these loops on the same um, scarf that the other ones are on to hold them until I need them.
We need to count our stitches now. We should have 25. If we don't have 25, if we have more, we'll just take one stitch out. That's not a problem. This is the front side. This will be facing you, the braid side. And the back side where the dashes are will be facing away from you. We want to slide our arm in the last loop and all of the loops should be open facing you and your hand goes in the back of the loop to the front of the loop and should slide on your arm. This will ensure that the stitches are facing the right way. So I'll just go through this quickly and let you carry on. And this is what we're doing till we come to the end. You can also slide the extra stitches on a scarf like I have been doing, but for this I'm just going to put all of them on my arm. It is a bit packed but it does work. I've already pulled off the extra stitch I had, which is why I have this kind of hanging extra thing on the end. Each row in this blanket begins with slipping the first stitch. By doing that, you just simply place it on your other arm, and this will create a nice smooth edge. Now the next stitches we're going to purl and the knit. Purling is done by putting the yarn in the front, pulling it through the loop, and then putting your arm through the loop. That's a purl. Knitting, which is going to be the next stitch, a knit stitch, is done by pulling the yarn through the back of the loop and then up. So purling, you pull the yarn through the front of the loop. Knitting, you pull the yarn through the back of the loop. So we're going to purl this one, pull it through, and then we're going to knit the next one. The entire blanket is made by knitting one, purling one, knitting one, purling one, and continuing till you have one stitch left. Again, like I showed you before, if you have too many stitches to hold on your arm, you can go ahead and pop them onto a scarf. Just be sure you save like one or two stitches to hold on the arm that will have almost no stitches. Now we continue on with our knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one pattern. So this is a purl stitch, that means a purl stitch needs to go there, and this next one will be a knit stitch, that's a knit stitch, now a purl stitch. You can tell which one you need to be knitting. If you look at the stitch directly under it, it should tell you if it's a knit or a purl by the dash going across for purls and the yarn going up the side for knits. So this is a purl stitch and the next one's going to be a knit stitch. It won't have that nice dash. Let me just speed things up and get to the end. For the last stitch, we're going to KTBL, which means knit through the back loop. And the very last stitch, we'll be doing that by simply holding the yarn in our hand and pulling it straight through the loop. You don't pull it through the front or the back, you just pull it straight through the loop on your arm. And that's a KTBL. You do that with every last stitch. And we just leave it on our other arm because that would be slipping the stitch for the next row. 
So it's slipped onto the next arm for this new row that we're going to be doing. This is a purl stitch, so we're going to purl it. The next one's a knit stitch, so we're going to be knitting it. And you follow the same pattern all the way through. Purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one, all the way to the end. If you get lost, just look at the um, look at the stitch below what you're just going to knit and see if it's a knit stitch or a purl stitch and that will tell you where you need to be. At this point we're going to transfer the stitches that were on the scarf back onto our arm. So it's a little bit um, fiddly but you can do it. Just go slow, try not to pull the stitches too much and just pop them back onto your arm ready for knitting. Remember the last stitch in every row always gets a KTBL, which is knit through the back loop, pull it straight through, and then slip it right onto the arm, and that's the slipping of the first stitch in every row. Now I'm going to let you do the rest yourself. Remember to slip the first stitch in every row, and then purl, knit, purl, knit, purl, all the way to the end, and always knit through the back loop the last one. You need to do this until you have enough yarn left for one last row and then we'll do the cast off. Your blanket should look something like this. Once you've finished you should have nice rows of knits and purls and up the side of the blanket you should have this nice smooth braid um, look that will be a little bit bigger than the braid look from the cast on. And this is a very stretchy blanket. It can really stretch a long ways. So let's do the cast off now. To do this we need to slip the first stitch like we always do and then we're going to follow our pattern so that means purling the next stitch. So we're going to purl this one and then hold it in our hand, don't actually put it all the way on our arm, just hold it in our hand and then take the back loop over the front loop and drop it off. And we continue doing this all the way. So this is a knit stitch, we're going to knit this one. Hold it in our hand, drop the back loop over the front one and drop it off and we're going to continue doing that. That's the cast off. Do that until you have one loop left.
You now have one loop left, and with that loop we're going to pull all the rest of our yarn. Your yarn tail should not be as long as mine is. I have 20 more projects to knit with this yarn, so I don't want to break it. But your yarn tail should only be about 24 centimeters long or 12 inches. Pull it through, then snug up this loop nice and tight. Now I'm going to pretend I only have a short loop. Your braid should look like this. The cast off should look like a braid like that. So let's do the weaving in. Your tail should be about this long and you just tuck it in along the edges of the blanket nicely out of sight so it's not crisscrossing diagonal through your um, blanket just straight down the edge of it and it should hide nicely there shouldn't be um, a lot of extra bulk but it will just hide nicely make sure you get the very tip of the tail tucked in and then that's the completion of your blanket now we also had a kind of a bulge at the beginning on our cast on because I had an extra stitch that I took off so we're gonna fix this by untying it and unraveling it a bit and then we're gonna end up with another loop and then we're just gonna snug it up again and do the same weave in this tail again this tail is too long it should ideally be broken off or pulled or cut to be shorter but we're just gonna kind of weave it into the edges and make it disappear and then you should have a gorgeous absolutely gorgeous blanket at the end If you've enjoyed this tutorial, please comment and share this. We're also on Patreon if you want to support us that way. Like us on Facebook, follow us wherever you find us, and help us keep these awesome arm knitting tutorials free.